So we're almost ready to finally see some results in our PHPP energy model. Um, as we looked at in our, our last video series when we were looking at the domestic hot water, we're darn close. There's a, a last couple pieces that we need to finish building. Uh, of course, we need to add some heating and cooling systems. Uh, the equipment itself, uh, uh, that's going to be really important for getting final energy performance values. Um, but we do, uh, as we just looked at in our domestic hot water series, need to adjust just a couple of um, sort of global settings in the PHPP as well. Um, maybe, we, maybe we should have done this like as the very first thing. Um, certainly we could have, but let, let's, take a, let's take a few minutes now. And in this video, let's touch on how we configure the various settings of the PHPP. Um, we'll talk about how we can set up things like the certification target. Um, and then we'll add just a little bit of extra detail. There's just a little more information that we do need to add around, um, as we saw, the occupancy and the usage of the building. So we need to tell PHPP a little bit about what type of building this is. You know, is it a residence? Is it a hospital? Is it a warehouse? You know, what type of building is it? So that we can determine the occupancy. And of course, the occupancy is going to start to drive a lot of the important pieces that we're going to look at next. Uh, you know, things like domestic hot water usage and uh, lighting energy usage and appliance energy usage, um, all of that kind of kind of stuff. So uh, let's take a look at that in this uh, video series here. So if you've been following along, you should have something look that looks roughly like what you see on the screen here. We've got our Rhino model um, in the background there. You see we just finished up our domestic hot water section there. So we've got our interior floor plates and our domestic hot water piping. And then we've got our grasshopper model on the right-hand side where we're creating all of the geometry, pushing that through and adding a fresh air ventilation system, adding domestic hot water, and then exporting that out to the PHPP. So what we're going to do now is, as I said, we're going to add some configuration, some, um, you know, some setup to the PHPP. Before we do that, let's take a look at uh, where we are now with the PHPP. So let me come in here and let me go to my C drive. And um, as you've seen throughout this course, I'm just saving everything to this um, LBT to Ladybug to Tools to PH example folder. And so in here, I've got my, my results, which is our output PHPP from the last step. So let me load that up and we will take a look at that and see, um, see, see where we stand in our PHPP. So let's do that before we start adding any new bits. So let me maximize this so that we can take a look here. And so we're here on the verification page and, and so we are getting some answers. We're getting some results. Some of them seem a little silly. So this can't quite be right. Um, we're getting some error here. So there's clearly something kind of odd happening. Um, and notice also that we're, we're, uh, PHPP is telling us that we have an error on this worksheet. So PHPP is smart enough to know that we have not filled in all of the information yet. right? And it, it tells us that by flagging the rows. Now, now PHPP isn't you know, so it can't tell us where in the row we're missing information, but at least it tells us the row that we are missing information on. So somewhere on this row, we're missing some important data. And of course, the important data that we're missing is right here, number of dwelling units. We looked at this in the last session. That's going to be one of the key inputs that PHPP needs in order to calculate occupancy, in addition to some other, some other elements. So, okay, so we got to put that information in. Um, if I scroll over to the right, notice also on the verification worksheet, um, you know, we're getting this flag here, data missing. Um, also, uh, on this same worksheet, we have the ability to set the type of building. So is it a residence or a non-residence? Is it a, you know, is it a dwelling or a hospital, a nursing home, a dormitory? Um, and then what type of internal heat gains values should we use? Should we use the standard or should we go off and calculate them ourselves? You know, if it's a non-residential application, you're going to have to do very careful internal heat gains calculations based on the actual lighting power density and et cetera, et cetera, occupancy. Um, we don't have to do that here. We're just going to use the standard residential um, internal heat gains. That, that'll be fine for our purpose here. Uh, and then down here we have occupancy. Um, and we are given the choice, do we want to use standard occupancy for residences or do we want to do user determined if you're doing something like a, obviously any sort of non-residential, you know, hospital, a, a warehouse, something like that, you're going to have to input the actual average uh, annual number of, of um, occupants. Uh, in our case, we can leave it set to standard for, for residences. 
Uh, down below, of course, we have some other settings. We can set up the type of building standard that we want to shoot for. Are we going to be pursuing um, PassFouse or Enerfit? The, the uh, retrofit standard, the PHI low energy building certification, which is one of my personal favorites. I actually think this is a great standard. I, I recommend this to a lot of our single family home clients. I think it's a very um, well balanced standard personally, um, or some other standard, right? So you get to choose which one you which one you like. There, are you going to be shooting for PassFouse Classic Plus or Premium? Um, is it are you using primary energy? Uh, or primary energy renewable, um, and, uh, and and what type of Enerfit ver uh, verification are you doing? You're using the com by component method, right, the prescriptive approach, or the energy demand method, the performance based method. So lots of different settings here for the type of certification that we wanna that we wanna target. So let's look at how we're gonna set this up. The way we're gonna set this up is not by coming into the PHPP and selecting the value that we want. Remember, we talked about this last time. That's not how we want to work the PHPP. I don't want to come in and actually edit things in the PHPP itself. I think, in an ideal world, all of the information for the PHPP should come from our Grasshopper model. It's going to avoid confusion. It's going to avoid problems. Uh, later on, you know, you put the project down for six months, you come back, open it up again, you're going to forget where those, where that information comes from um, unless it's super clear. And so for, our, for my purposes and, and my recommendation to you is try and do everything through that Grasshopper file. And so, of course, we have some tools to allow you to do that. So let me maximize our Grasshopper scene. Whoa, okay. that didn't, wasn't it? Let me maximize our Grasshopper scene. So we're not going to be working in Rhino in this video. We're going to do everything in our Grasshopper definition here. So we have our basic definition where we build the rooms, the geometry, we build our fresh air vent, add our domestic hot water, and then we configure the model. So let's come in here to this model configuration, and we're going to add some additional information here. So it's currently in the model configuration. Well, we're not really doing any configuration. Right, we, have our, we have our honeybee model. The honeybee model could flow out to something like Open Studio, could flow out to a daylight simulation, radiance or something, could also, and as in this case, flow out to the PHPP. So that same Honeybee model can go to multiple different places. In this case, it's just being converted into a PHPP document and then flows out to Excel. Okay, but well, there's not, as I said, any configuration happening here. Uh, so let's add some configuration elements. So the first thing that I'd like to do is I'd like to set up the occupancy for the building. So the very first thing that I'd like to set is that occupancy. And that's pretty straightforward. All we have to do is come up here to our PassFouse Tools ribbon in Grasshopper and come into O1 Model. And in O1 Model, if you scroll down a little bit, you'll notice that there's uh, this uh, set PHPP occupancy component. So we have a whole component here which allows us to configure the occupancy values for the building. And so if I just grab that and drop that onto the canvas anywhere, Let's take a look at what we have here. So we have a PHPP occupancy. It's going to take in, notice down here on the bottom, it's going to take in a Honeybee model. And then we've got a bunch of individual elements here that we can set, things like the occupancy, the number of residential units, the type of building, residents or non-residents, the internal heat gains type, um, dwellings, nursing homes, offices, schools, other, um, and then the internal heat gains values, either uh, standard or uh, non-standard if you want to use the, you know, um, if you want to use the internal heat gains um, uh, detailed calculation. So we can configure all of those drop-down menus right here from inside of our Grasshopper uh, definition. Now, and so that's great, so we'll do that in a second. I want you to notice one important thing here. Unlike all of the components that we've been using so far, notice that this component takes in a honeybee model, not honeybee rooms. Remember in the new Ladybug uh, 1.0 configuration, we have our honeybee rooms. So a lot of our components, things like the domestic hot water and the ventilation, they take in the actual honeybee rooms but remember right here, we're going to combine together one or more rooms into a single Honeybee model. So a model is made of one or more rooms. And then, of course, as we know, we've seen the rooms 
can be made of one or more spaces, individual volumes inside of those rooms. You know, you can have a kitchen and a closet and a bedroom inside of the honeybee rooms. The, the room is, it's a weird vocab choice, I think. Um, I, I like to think of it more as a, a zone. Um, uh, but in any event, they're, they're called honeybee rooms. And um, within those rooms, we can have multiple, multiple volumes or spaces. In any event, the, the, uh, the rooms get combined together to form a model. So this occupancy does not get applied to individual honeybee rooms. It gets applied to the entire honeybee model. So that's important. What that means is that we have to put it in here after we build the model. So after we've built this honeybee model, we have to put in our component here. We can't put it before. So I cannot put it before. It has to come after the honeybee model gets built. In order to use it though, it's quite simple. All I have to do is take my honeybee model, feed it in to this honeybee model. I take the output. I could send the output off to something like Open Studio, or I could send the output off to the PHPP. What's happening here? Well, it's taking in the honeybee model and it's spitting out the honeybee model, but it's doing some work behind the scenes. It's adding some new information, uh, you know, making some calculations, etc. So I haven't done anything. All I did was slide this guy in, add him to the chain. And what has that done to our PHPP? Let's take a look. Let me load up our PHPP. And based on that one component, nothing happened. Hm. Nothing happened. Oh, uh, I know why. Pause. Right. Uh, why didn't that work? Because we weren't actually connected to that Excel. We were just we were just looking at that Excel file, but we hadn't actually connected to it. That's my mistake. So of course we have to we have to boot up our Excel file here by uh, using our our Open Excel workbook uh, uh, component. So let me do that here. I will set this to true. This will go off and work for a second. It's going to reopen Excel. So I, I closed out that workbook that we were looking at. It's going to reopen Excel and then open up the workbook, but it's going to open it from within Grasshopper. And so we have that connection between Excel and Grasshopper started at this point. And so all of the data is going to flow from our Grasshopper scene out to our Excel model there. So now if I go take a look at our Excel model, and let's take a look at what we get here. There we go. So all our data is here flowing through. And let's go back to our verification worksheet. We were on the verification worksheet. Now, here we go. So now notice that the number of dwelling units gets automatically set to one. If we notice over on the right hand side, we have some additional settings. Let me just adjust this a little bit. We are setting up the building as a residence a dwelling using standard internal heat gains and using standard occupancy. And notice also that our warning flag, our error flag, has disappeared from the PHPP. We've now given it all the information it needs in order to um, determine the number of occupants. Let's go back to Grasshopper for a second. We don't need to, we don't need to give this anything at all in order to have it configure our model as a standard single family residence. Now anything else we can add in our custom configuration. So I can come in and I can change any of these values. For instance, I could set the number of residents number of residences to three. I say oh it's a you know it's a duplex or a multifamily, you know, townhouse of some sort. I can input three as the number of residential units. And then once that's completed, it's right, what we'll notice is that everything, including the, uh, the uh, occupancy, has updated inside the PHPP. So if I come over to my PHPP and I take a look, notice that the number of dwelling units has been set to three, and now notice the number of occupants has jumped up to 3.7. Um, if you want to know how the number of occupants is calculated, uh, it is this calculation right here. Uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> Whatever that is, there's, uh, there's all sorts of things happening here. Um, you could track down all those bits and pieces if you're really interested, but just know that PHPP, if we assign a standard occupancy, is going to calculate the occupancy of the building based on the TFA and the number of dwelling units and some other stuff. In any event, we can set all of that information from within our Grasshopper file.
Of course, if I want to change any of these, let's say I want to change this to a non-residential building, that's as easy as going back to our grasshopper scene. So I can go, I could come to my grasshopper scene and I could uh, make that change. So I can come in here and I could say, what were we going to change? Oh, right, building type. Let's say we want it to be a non-residential building. So all I have to do is say two non-residential building. And I could input that as the building type. And as soon as that change has propagated through, uh oh, we're going to get an answer. What does it say? For non-residential buildings, please be sure to input the occupancy of the building. Oh. Right, isn't that right? So if we're going to do a non-residential building, we have to supply an actual occupancy. PHPP cannot calculate the occupancy for non-residential buildings. In addition, if we're going to say that it's a non-residential building, please select a valid building type, either, excuse me, internal heat gains type, either type 20, an office, type 21, a school, or type 22, other. Okay, so we have to give it an occupancy. So let's give it an occupancy. Let's say we have an occupancy of like um, seven. I don't know, maybe it's a little school building or something. And so we can give it the occupancy and that'll flow through and that should take care of the first of our errors. Yeah, but we still do need to give it a valid non-residential type. Let's say that it's a school. Let's say it's 21 school. So that'll be the type of internal heat gains. So let's say 21 school. And let's give that to internal heat gains type. And once we do that, I believe the error should, or the little warning should go away. Yeah, so we've given it all the information that it needs. And if we were to go back to PHPP, notice here that we now have a non-residential building as our building type, school as the utilization pattern, and then user determined for our occupancy. All right, so all of this can be controlled, whoops, excuse me, from within our grasshopper scene. I should note also that with all of these inputs, you don't actually have to type out the whole thing. You can just say 21, and that'll get interpreted as school. So if you you know if you don't want to type out the whole the whole thing there, it'll 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 it knows that type 21 is school, type 22 is other, type 20 is an office, you know that kind of thing. So you don't have to actually write out the whole thing. You can just give it a give it a numeric value there. But I don't actually want to do any of that. I want it to just be a typical resident. So I'm going to go ahead and delete. I'm going to delete all of these guys. Stop it. I'm going to delete. Huh. I'm going to delete. Nope, it's not letting me delete. There we go. I'm going to delete all of those guys. So those guys are all deleted. Go back to our PHPP. Notice it gets stepped back to residential, dwelling, standard. And if we come over to the left, a single dwelling unit. So 2.5 people. So that's our default. If we don't give it any information, it's going to set it up as a typical single family residence. All right, so there's our occupancy. So that's great. So that's one piece of the settings that we need to give to our PHPP. Now, there's a couple of other settings that we might want to set up. We'll go back to the PHPP for a sec. For instance, we noted over here on the lower portion that we've Got all of our, our building energy standard information here. So, you know, are you going to be building a passive house? Is it classic plus or premium, PE, PER, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So how are we going to set that information up? Well, to do that, we can use a new component. So I'll come up here to my passive house tools ribbon. And this time I'm going to come to this O2. And in O2, I actually have this PHPP setup component. And so if we drop that guy onto the screen here, we get, a, we get another, uh, another batch of settings. And just like before, I'm going to slide this in, in. So notice it takes in a Honeybee model. So I'm going to take the Honeybee output from my PHPP occupancy, feed that to the Honeybee input of this guy, this PHPP setup, and then pass that along to the next link in the chain. And as we have seen before, this uh, information can flow out to the PHPP. It could also flow out to OpenStudio. All right, so what do we have here? What kind of settings do we have? Well, energy standard, so passive house, Enerfit, PHI low energy building, certification class, classic plus or premium, primary energy, either primary old-fashioned primary energy or new primary energy renewable, 
What type of interfit is it? Well, is, it what, is it a retrofit or a new construction? Uh, and then we have some additional settings here, the thermal mass of the building, uh, as well as some information down here where we can set up the climate for the building. So we've never actually set up the climate for the building, obviously an important part of the, the puzzle here. Um, and so the climate is uh, uh, going to be an important uh, element for us to, to feed in here. Now, there's actually two ways that we can set the climate. So this is one way that we can set the climate. We can actually set it here explicitly. So we can say, what is the climate data set that we want to use? Uh, and we could just uh, input as text the, um, the name of the climate data set, which is inside the PHPP. Uh, go to the PHPP for a second. Um, in the climate tech worksheet, right, we have a whole list of different climate data sheets. This is just text. So we can input this text. You know, we can just... Um, uh, take that text and input that. Uh, and that would be fine. So we could absolutely set up the climate here in the PHPP setup. The other way that we could set climate, um, we'll just say quickly, is to actually feed an energy plus weather file into this component. And this guy will um, sort of try and figure out the nearest PHPP um, climate data, you know, based on longitude and latitude. So uh, if you want to just give it an EPW file, it will auto detect your location based on that information. But of course, you can explicitly set up the climate data here as well. So either one of those would work for setting up the climate data. If you don't do anything, um, it is going to set up your, it is going to set your project in New York. Um, I know, very New York centric, but what do you want me to tell you? I built I built a tool for me, and I, most of the projects I build are in New York, so uh, it's going to work uh, out of the box in a really convenient fashion for me. Uh, maybe not so much for you. Uh, so it, you can just reset this to whatever location you are working in here. Um, that would just fine. And now that all the and, and then I should also say, let's just finish up here by noting that let's go back to our verification. Notice now that all of these guys got set. So these get auto set to pass fast classic, primary energy, um, new construction. Of course, we can come in and we can edit any of those by inputting information here, same as we've done before. Just have a panel and input, you know, to uh, enter fit. Right, so we could input that as the energy standard that we want to shoot for. So I could input that as the energy standard, and that'll flow in. That'll make some modifications to the honeybee model. The honeybee model will flow along in the, the link of the chain there, and that'll get updated over here in our uh, in our project. All right, so all that will flow through. But I don't want to do that. I want to leave it set to new construction. So let me come here and say delete. And we'll clear that out. So at this point, let me go back to our PHPP. At this point, our PHPP is set up and working pretty well. So we have just about all the information in that we need. Notice down here, we are getting some good results. Uh, we're still getting some silly results for our primary energy, but that's mostly because we haven't set up any heating or cooling systems yet. The basic parameters of the PHPP have all been set up, and when we come back in the next series of videos, we can finally turn our attention to those heating and cooling systems, and we'll round out the model and finally, finally, finally take a look at some actual results for yearly energy consumption.